What's going on, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Blazers Pulse, brought to you by BetUS. In this episode, we're going to review the 2023-2024 season, and the biggest thing I wanted to uncover with the polls included in this video is, have Blazer fans given up on the team officially, or is it just temporary? If you're new to Blazers Pulse, I go to the community tab of the channel and I ask poll questions, and then I turn them into a video where I go over the results and some of the comments. In poll number one, I asked a question that I asked this time last year. And the question was, how did this season leave you feeling about the Portland Trail Blazers' future? And 30% of you said it made you more excited for the future, compared to 36% of you last year, so that's a little bit down. However, the negative option is also down. Last year, 40% of you said our future looks bleaker and you were more pessimistic. Now, that was only 27%. The biggest change, 42% of you said this season didn't change anything for you last year. That was 25%. A couple of comments that were left on this poll. John Nash says, only new ownership and management will change my outlook of this team. And I'll be honest, I kind of share that same sentiment. And I would love a new owner, a new general manager, a new head coach, a new everything. I think it's time to just wash this franchise clean and start from the top down with new ownership. And then we had a comment from Jonathan Evers who said, I don't see a future superstar on this roster. Shea is the only one I see having a shot. And the Spurs and Thunder will be unstoppable for at least a decade. Portland has maybe the fifth best young core plus future assets in the West. Can't say I'm feeling good about it. Now, we've seen teams that look like they'll be unstoppable dynasties, and it's really hard to maintain that level of success. I know with Wemby, right? I mean, he's going to be phenomenal. Um, but, I, I mean, OKC barely beat the Pelicans in their first game of the playoffs. I don't know if OKC will quite be to that level. They have a lot of picks. It's going to be teams that the Blazers are going to have to beat. But um, any given year, you know, any team can win. And uh, the NBA is a little bit unpredictable. Uh, from like a five-year to five-year basis. Hopefully in the next five years, the Blazers can finally make some noise. For poll number two, I asked you guys, how are you feeling about this year's NBA playoffs? And I also asked you this question this time last year. And the results were wildly different. 60% of you said you're excited for this year's playoffs and that this year's postseason will be a lot of fun. Only 10% of you said that last year. Last year, I asked it with the caveat, like, how are you feeling with the Blazers not participating? And this option was worded like, you're more excited. Uh, it's going to be stress-free because the Blazers aren't in it. Um, but it's wild to see the difference in votes here. 26% of you said you were indifferent compared to 34% last year. And only 15% of you had the negative option, which I did change up. So it wasn't exactly the same poll, but at this point... I figured why not go with an option that says playoffs? What's playoffs? Because it's been a minute since the Blazers have been there. 56% of you last year voted that you weren't excited for the NBA playoffs. So uh, the results here were much, much different. As far as the comments on this poll, only one comment on this poll from John Nash, who said the last Blazer OKC game impressed me. They'll get to the Western Conference Finals. Excellent ball movement and pace. Chauncey Billups, take note. The OKC Thunder are very well coached, and that goes a long way, and I wish Mark Diagonal was the Blazers coach. I think he's probably going to win Coach of the Year, and he would definitely deserve it. For poll number three, I asked you guys what was your favorite part of this NBA season for the Blazers, and I ask this every year. Of course, every year it changes because different things go on each season, and in the past, I had always put positive options. I couldn't think of enough positive options to put on this poll, I'll be honest. So there was a couple negative options on this poll as well. Uh, the number one favorite part of the season for people, barely 36% of the vote, was Scoot's late season improvements. Scoot putting together some good games, and that didn't really surprise me that that led in this poll, considering a lot rides on Scoot. Uh, we need him to pan out, so the fact that he was showing flashes after struggling for the better part of the season was definitely my favorite part of the season as well, although the second option is right up there with it, and that's because I went to this game, and that was Dame's return, and the Blazers beating the Bucks at home, their only nationally televised game of the entire season, Amfordy Simons hitting a game winner against Dame, that was pretty cool, of course you had the whole tribute video stuff and all of that, welcoming, welcoming Dame back to Portland. Uh, he just had a phenomenal game one for the Bucks, so shout out to him. Uh, those were my top two favorite moments. But I do have fond memories of, honestly, all of these. 
okay sharps overtime dominance versus memphis got 15 percent of the vote and that was the first play in tournament game and that was sharp uh having that block to send it to overtime and then uh, having some really impressive offensive moments in that overtime and uh, there were stretches this season where sharp looked like a legitimate star and that the end of that game was one of those and hopefully he can stay healthy next year that's <laughs> I put an option called it ending. Your favorite part of the season was it ending? 35% of you said yes. And I'm also glad the season's over. I'm ready for the offseason. I'm ready to uh, see what the Blazers do in June. Of course, we got the lottery coming up in May. I'm excited for that. And then I put the Blazers 60 point losses. That only got 2% of the vote. But the reason why I put that was because after the new year, I think our two best post game streams were when the Blazers lost by 60. So I honestly kind of enjoyed the Blazers losing by 60 because the streams popped off and I felt completely justified in just ranting about the team, which is always healthy, right? So I did enjoy those. There was a lot of comments on this poll. Let's jump into them. Uh, I'm just going to throw them all up in one sheet. Uh, Lucas bought a Shea jersey. You got Take who said Scoot's improvement is the most important thing on this team. I absolutely agree. Jonathan Ever says, enjoyed watching Sharp play when he was available, but I've never been more excited for a season to end than this one. I think a lot of people share that sentiment. Champ says, I'm just trying to get to the draft slash draft lottery. Thankfully, the lottery is only three weeks away, which is crazy. Samson said, definitely it ending it's hard to watch a team you know will lose most of their games. And Vili F20 said, Honestly, Aiton playing better because he's who I've been worried most about. Aiton playing better was definitely a fun stretch. It wasn't really like moments though. Uh, so it was, was kind of hard to put. Like Scoot's late season improvements were, were moments, were good moments. Um, and was kind of like on a game to game basis where Aiton, his improvement was like the whole second half of the year. Uh, but his improvement was definitely very, very good. And then the final comment on this poll was Nate J Dub, who said Sharp's game against Memphis won me $200. Hashtag bet us, which is a perfect segue for our sponsor. You can get in on the NBA playoffs with BetUS with their phenomenal promotional offer. They're offering you three 125% deposit matches on your first three deposits up to $2,500 with the promo code JOIN125. And BetUS is a phenomenal sports book as they offer you 24-7 customer service and 24-hour payouts. And with game ones done of the first round of the NBA playoffs, now is the time to get in on the action, to get in on spread lines, prop bets, and all sorts of fun stuff that BetUS has you covered with for the NBA playoffs. Also, if you're not feeling the playoffs and instead are into the draft, they got you covered there too with some draft lines as well. So go check them out. Click that link in the description box below to sign up as it greatly helps out the channel as well. It's one of the best ways you can support us and go have some fun with the NBA playoffs. Now back to the video. In poll number four, I asked you, was this season better or worse than last year? And I was very curious to see the results to this. Option one was it was better because I never had hope. And 13% of you went with that. You know, we didn't have the letdown of starting 4-0 and 10-3 and, and then completely falling apart and tanking the rest of the year with Dame, right? Like, we kind of knew what this was going in, so it was a little easier to stomach. 29% of you voted for option number two, which was it was better because at least we're rebuilding, right? It's kind of the same option, I guess. So you can lump them together if you want. That's 42% of you said it was better than last year. 42% uh, of you also said it was worse than last year because it just wasn't as fun. We didn't have as many high moments. We didn't have as many good things happen. We didn't have the fun of a 71-point game from Dame or anything like that. So pretty split there. And then 16% of you uh, said it's all the same. So pretty neutral results for that poll. The comments for that poll read as such. Nick says, I love the Blazers, but they're a joke right now. Todd says, I said at the beginning of the season, 20 wins max. They got 21, exceeded my rock bottom expectations. And you can pause to read the last comment, but Sam says, it's hard to say this year is better than last year because last year we had Dame and he gave us a chance. Turok says, Blazer basketball screwed until the team sold. I know a ton of fans share that sentiment. John Nash says, read the ESPN Timberwolves sale failure article. And it gives some perspective about what Jody and Burt are thinking towards uh, about ownership strategy. And 
yeah, I don't think they're going to sell the team anytime soon, unfortunately. Uh, I wish they would. And then Zach Landia, shout out to him for being a member and a mod. He says, my answer should be that it was better because even though it was less entertaining, at least we chose the rebuilding direction. But due to the lack of confidence and ownership in the front office making smart trades that build towards the future, I still feel as though the team is directionless or at the very least, isn't fully committed to a rebuild. It made the team less enjoyable to root for this season. And I think that's the biggest thing right now with a lot of people is they just want the team to embrace the rebuild. They chose this route when they drafted a six foot three, 19 year old point guard while trying to win now around Dame, even though they didn't make a single trade all off season until Dame requested out. And they didn't make a single signing all off season, except for Moses freaking Brown, who's like now the fourth, fifth best center on this team. I don't even know. I can't even keep track. That's what they did around Dame. They chose the rebuild route, but they still got Brogdon and Robert Williams and Jeremy Grant. And for me, I would rather just get draft picks for those guys, continue to stockpile assets, continue to go all in on the youth movement, bring in a couple of veterans that are maybe eighth, ninth men type of guys, or they don't even have to play, right? You can have veteran mentorship without guys that actually have to see the floor. Damian Lillard credited Earl Watson a ton with veteran mentorship early on in Dame's career and Earl Watson barely played so uh, I think a lot of fans share that sentiment a lot of fans want to keep the vets a lot of fans even want to trade a guy like Ant to keep a guy like Brogdon which doesn't really make sense I'm okay if this team just picks a direction and actually commits to it until then it's going to be very frustrating and then the final poll poll number five says how has your interest in the team changed over the past season and I asked this question because we heard about viewership being down 50 to 60% for Blazer broadcasts and uh, even heard that it was down more than that at the very end of the season, down 70%, which is just absolutely insane. And a lot of people basically have let us know that they don't care about the team right now. They just are completely checked out. So I asked this poll and only 9% of you said you were more interested 36% of you said your interest is the same. I guess on the bright side, you could say 45% of people didn't lose interest. Like that's pretty good compared to the way things seem. But of course, that's just based on the people that voted in this poll. 45% uh, said they're less interested. And 10% said they left with Dame. Like they're just, they're done, right? They're Bucks fans now, I guess, or whatever. And I wasn't surprised at the results for this poll. I don't think anybody's interest in this went up. I think, you know, if the Blazers get a really fun young guy like an Alex Sar, then next year uh, might be a little bit different. And that's all we can hope for at this point. The comments for this poll, we had a few. Shout out to Dirty Blazers fan. Says, loved watching Scoot, Tamani, Chris, Aiton build chemistry together. Scoot will be a two-way star once he stops fumbling over his feet and the basketball. Yeah, it's pretty important in basketball and in other sports to not fumble. Shout out to Min Mom, who says, Sorry guys, I always liked prepping for the draft in past years. This year I don't care at all. I don't like Cronin. Not a fan of Chauncey either, really. Takes the fun out of it for me. I feel that. This year's draft is fun, though. It's not the best draft, but there's a lot of intriguing storylines, and it's just going to be a complete chaos this year. And I kind of like chaos. I'm looking forward to the chaos of this year's draft, and then, and then next year's draft is really, really good. So... Uh, looking forward to just the next year starting around draft time up until next year's draft. I think it should be better than this past year was. And then shout out to Take, who says this past season was not fun at all. But I am really looking forward to seeing Shea and Scoot in the starting lineup and develop to be the most scary backcourt combo. Yeah, that backcourt combo would be a lot of fun. We'll see if they start next year and, or if one comes off the bench. Because Ant's starting, and they don't want to start all three guards, and they want to start Tomani at the three. Which, uh, I don't know. I'm kind of okay with Tomani starting. I love Tomani. Uh, it better not be Grant starting at the three, and one of the young guards coming off the bench. I, I don't know. But that's why this offseason is very intriguing, is because they do have a couple of little log jams in terms of okay role players at positions. And they do have some assets. They have two lottery picks, unless the Warriors pick moves up into the top four. And they're $9 million into the tax, so how in the world are they going to duck that, right? It might not be the best solution, but at least it could uh, show us some things in terms of what the Blazers uh, 
you know, maybe did or did not pass up on at the deadline, depending on what they take this offseason. Uh, this offseason has a ton of storylines, so hopefully you guys are invested in it. I know I am. And with that being said, that's a wrap for this episode of Blazers Pulse. Hopefully you enjoyed. And shout out to BetUS once again for sponsoring the video. Make sure to get on, in on that NBA playoff action with that link down in the description box below. And with that being said, I'm out of here. I'll catch you next time. Until then, as always, peace out. Go Blazers.